and I'm going to mute everyone, and then you'll have to unmute yourself, right? William, okay? Okay. Good morning, everybody. My name is William Mercado, and I'm the president of the Fair Oaks Village Enhancement Committee. Uh, I wanted to thank everyone for joining us in this Zoom meeting uh, uh, as we're trying to have them every, every month. Uh, last month uh, was very successful and uh, everybody seemed to have been very pleased with that. And moving forward, we hope we can uh, live up to that same standard. Okay, so Fovic has been around since 2008 and is an all volunteer nonprofit organization. Our scope is the village. And for that reason, we, these meetings will, will be focused on the village itself. Uh, over the years, we've completed many projects, uh, as I call them enhancement projects, and uh, intend to continue to do that. Um, and, uh, one of the reasons for having these meetings is to be able to make the community aware of the things that we're planning to do, the things that we're doing, and hopefully uh, entice you to uh, join us and uh, get you to volunteer your time to help us with these projects. Uh, as an all-volunteer organization, our capacity of, for completing projects is really based on our manpower. Um, uh, let's see what else. I wanted to share uh, about uh, how we've set up these meetings. Uh, these meetings have been set up so that uh, you are all muted as you sign in. And uh, that the purpose of that is so that we have a clear audio while we're doing these presentations. But uh, we do want to hear from you. So I encourage you to use the chat function uh, down at the bottom of your screen uh, to share comments and to ask your questions. At the end of our uh, presentations, we will take those questions and do our very best to answer them. Okay, so uh, for today, what we have for you is a continuation of the Park District update. Uh, that will be done by Mike Ajo, the uh, director of the park. Oh, I always say it incorrectly. The Rec <laughs> Recreation and Park District. And uh, this time around, he's going to share with us about events that normally occur at the park and all other activities and what will be happening during these 18 months of construction. Uh, we'll have uh, Rachel then from Rachel Griffith from the chamber, the Fair Oaks chamber, follow him. And uh, let's see who else. After that, we'll have Don Langford, a uh, member of the uh, theater district uh, board, giving us an update about what the theater uh, intends to do during this time, what their plans are, followed then by um, an update by, let's see, it should be Pete. Yes, it should be Pete, uh, Pete Schroeder giving us an update on FOCAP and then Nan Danford, our secretary, the secretary of FOVIC giving us some village updates followed by Keith sharing uh, something about our website. Uh, we've made several changes and so Keith is going to be sharing about that. Keith is also our treasurer. So, and then we'll close with a question and answer period. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it to Mike Ajo. Thank you, William. And uh, thank you everybody for showing up this morning. It is early and I do appreciate your spending your time here, um, getting these kinds of updates from us and from Povec. I think it's very critical that everybody stays engaged and involved and informed about what's going on in the village because it is such a unique place. Um, as William mentioned, I'm Mike Ajo. I'm the district administrator for Fair Oaks Recreation and Park District. In 2008, 
2015, uh, the voters passed Measure J, which was a general obligation bond put forward by the Park District. Uh, it was an $18.8 million bond measure, largest um, bond measure ever, um, and the only bond measure ever um, by Fair Oaks Recreation and Park District. Uh, construction for this project, and we'll be talking specifically about Village Plaza Park area, um, so right around the village, um, is scheduled to start sometime in May or June. We initially thought it would be May for sure. Um, we're having some uh, challenges with uh, some right-of-way issues and some also utility issues. It's amazing how many things that we are affected, that are affected by um, permitting and by early work. Um, we may have already dropped almost a $1 million and um, probably the only thing you've ever seen is paint on the ground. Uh, so we're, we're hoping to, that there'll be some kind of visual here soon. Uh, the first visual you'll probably see will be the um, demolition of the amphitheater building, uh, the stage area only, and then the uh, salon building right next to it, and then the hazardous material removal from the community clubhouse. So those are probably the first things you'll see happen. Um, so interesting, I just want to tell a quick story. Uh, the other day I was reviewing the fire suppression plan for the new facility, the amphitheater, uh, and I, I got thinking about that and over the complexity and the volume of stuff that is going into the fire suppression alone, um, it's probably close to about half a million dollars and maybe even more, it might be three quarters of a million. I don't have the breakout of that, but it's substantial around that facility. And when you think about our current facility, it is a, uh, it, it was constructed using materials that were available and affordable and things like that. Yet there's still some safety, some common safety functions in a public facility that it's missing. And this fire suppression system, when I think about it, it really makes that facility safe for the public over its life, lifespan. And if we're able to save one person's life because of that fire suppression system, if we ever had an incident, I, I think it's money well spent. So I just wanted to bring that up. It's it's something you'll never see and hopefully we'll never have to use. And But it, it is one of these things that really drives price and things like that. Next slide, please. So all of Mike, our events- um, Mike, one, Mike no, if this, I may. This, this is perfect, go ahead, yeah. Um, one of the things you had asked is oh. you were interested kind of how people learn about yes. things in the village or particularly about the parks district. And so if I could just ask everyone, take a moment and give us a little bit of feedback. How do you get information about activities that the uh, Fair Oaks uh, Recreation and Park District uh, hold? And I'll give you, you know, another five or 10 seconds to vote. Interesting. Okay, so I'm going to end the poll now, and hopefully all of you are now able to see the results. Wow. William or Mike, are the results showing? Yeah, they are. Thank you. Yeah. And that, that's real interesting. Um, it, it is not surprising, but what is surprising a little bit is the, the three-way tie there. It not is. surprising. Oh, yeah. Obviously, those are the favorites. Yeah, and uh, that shows really some value in uh, the hard copy, the print, and the active media like Facebook, and then the the pushed e um, promotions like to your own email. Uh, so uh, interesting, interesting dynamics there. Excellent. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Anyway, um, <laughs> those are always fun to see. I'm going to go ahead and go back one one slide there, Keith, if you would. Thank you. Okay. So COVID has really affected parks and recreation. You probably noticed that we don't do events. We don't do programs. We don't do rentals. Um, we, we're busy just doing, uh, keeping our heads above water, providing parks and spaces. Uh, the challenge now, who would have thought COVID was going to happen and, and last this long? None of us anticipated that when we started planning for construction. Um, so once we are starting to roll out of COVID and getting less restrictive like we are now, we're gonna immediately or almost immediately go into um, shut down for the Village Plaza Park. And that shutdown is going to last 12 to 18 more months. So realistically, we're looking at almost a two-year shutdown of events and programs and facility rentals in the village. I, I, I feel bad about that. Um, I wish it wasn't that way. 
but uh, those things are out of our control and out of our hands. And we're gonna make the best of it that we can. And we do understand the impact and the damage that can occur because of COVID as well as our impact for the construction. But we hope the other side is much better. So we are, we are, we are under obligation to follow the Sacramento County Public Health uh, District um, and what they tell us to do, that is for liability reasons. We don't get to choose and we want to follow those and keep everybody safe as well and our staff safe. So um, no matter what we'd like to do, it really comes down to what we're allowed to do. Uh, right now, we're only planning one to three months out in advance for our events. It, since the outlook's not clear um, and it's ever changing, and even our one to three months can change because uh, if, for an example, we had another spike, uh, which we all hope doesn't happen, that can affect us in what we're doing and what we provide. No matter what's going to happen, it's important that we have partnership with our village merchants and our community to be able to host events um, and events that we're proposing to do this next year. And as always, weather does uh, affect the events. Next slide, please. So here's some of our proposed new and staying special events. Um, again, as, as we go forward with this, we've got a 12 to 18 month window that we're wanting to plan for as the, as the community opens up, yet the parks are not. Um, so one of them is the Fair Oaks <clears throat> Village Taste and Sips. This is the, a sample food and drinks around the village. Uh, we don't have a date yet. Uh, we're waiting for some COVID restrictions again. Um, but an example is like the second Thursday of the month from June to October, through October. And we'd want to partner with the Fair Oaks Chamber and the Village Merchants to make this happen. And really our target for this to, to help along in the pandemic or in, the, in this closure is uh, the food and drink establishments and the variety that we have here and to encourage those um, establishments to be uh, visited and enjoyed by the public. The next event that we're proposing is the Fair Oaks Village Walking Tour. These are small group tours throughout the village, uh, kind of learning about the village, the buildings, the history, things like that, and around the surrounding area in, in the village. We are a very historic community, and we've got a lot of history right around us. You can see the red bridge there um, coming up on the, on the second picture there. You see the, pit, the red br bridge picture, and that area in itself is kind of interesting. Um, again, tentative dates. Uh, for an example, it could be the fourth Sunday of the month from June to October. Uh, we'd like to partner with the Fair Oaks Historic Society and they're on board with us on that. And really it's the target for this event is all the village um, will be on display for it. And then the uh, Fair Oaks, the, um, I'm missing the Scarecrow Contest there. Um, that's located throughout the village. And it obviously it's gonna be the month of October right around Halloween. Uh, we're hopefully partnering with the Fair Oaks Chamber and the Rotary uh, may be doing their safe Halloween event on Halloween uh, on that day. So what we'd like to do is kind of coordinate those events so they're all occurring at once. And we're using that energy of the Rotary Club, the kids, uh, Halloween, and the village as a whole to really bring people into the village and to really help them enjoy what we have. Again, with the parks being closed, we're going to look at the village as, as an, in an entirety and, and utilize it as a park or a facility to do activities and programs that benefits the merchants and still serves the public. Um, and then the Fair Oaks Village Shop local passport and campaign activity. Um, this is a kind of a giveaway program for shopping local. Uh, the tentative dates for that are the month of November, so that pre-Christmas type of thing. Um, partners would be the Fair Oaks, Oaks Chamber and also the Village Merchants, and um, we would hope that this would assist most of the retail merchants in the village area. And then finally, the tree of the tree lighting and festival of tree walks. We really want the village to look festive for Christmas. And let me tell you one other thing about that. When we open the park back up, I'm hoping that we're able to really drive that festive look of the village. Um, that we're able to come in with the tree and extra lighting and music and all kinds of things that really puts that energy of the holidays into the community and that we drive that forward and then other entities kind of bring in their own power and their own strength and their own abilities to make that village a destination for people from around the area uh, around the Christmas time. So we're gonna try and do some kind of Christmas thing. We don't know where the tree is going to go. Um, you can see the tree there in the picture, but we're not sure exactly where it's gonna go. 
Um, we, we're a little space challenged, but maybe throughout the construction, we'll have a little window there where we can put it up someplace. So next slide, please. So a couple of uh, special events that we've had and that we'll be going over uh, at doing a little differently this year, but still having the father-daughter dance uh, and family dance, May 21st and 22nd. We're going to be holding that at Fair Oaks Park. It's usually in the community clubhouse. It's going to be a Western theme, and it's going to be all outdoors this year. So it's going to be kind of an interesting change or switch. That may happen again next year uh, that way. So we're looking at probably two years of that event maybe being over there in Fair Oaks Park. And then our concerts, comedy, and family series. If you look at that second picture there, you'll see our portable stage, which we purchased specifically to be able to still do events, even though we don't have Village Plaza Park. We're working on that now, uh, working on the stairs and the covering and things like that. So it's fully available for community events. We're going to be using it for high school graduations. Um, if we can, we're going to use it for a variety of different things throughout the next two years and beyond. And if you're a community member and uh, you have some kind of event that you would like to partner with us on that and potentially use the stage, you know, just let us know and we'll see if we can pull that off. It's going to be held over, oh, this event is going to be held over uh, in the Fair Oaks softball fields. Uh, we're looking right now at the last Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of June, July, and August to do this. So kind of a trifecta, if you will, um, of events in Fair Oaks Park. This is not concerts in the park. Um, it's that, we, that you're used to, so it's just a little bit different. It will be hosted by Fair Oaks Recreation and Park District, and we're hoping to get other possible partners with that. And we're also looking at some kind of family events with that too, maybe puppet shows, magic shows, critter shows. I mean, you name it, those kind of things that really draw the families. We've heard from the public that that's one thing that they really want is that family type of thing as well. We do really well with the adult stuff, the concerts in the park, the comedy under the stars, those types of things. And that we're hearing from the community, really look into those, those family type of events. And then uh, our breakfast with Santa uh, and the holiday stroll, it would be great if we tie that in with the holiday tree thing that you saw earlier and what that might look like. Um, it would probably be in Fair Oaks Park, this breakfast with Santa, um, and it would maybe be a drive through, a pickup or a walk through, depending on what we're able to do uh, because of COVID restrictions. Next slide, please. And if you were at our last month's presentation, you saw this slide here. This is the plan for Village Plaza Park, and it's actually going to be Village Park, one name um, for it. And what we're hoping for after um, we open back up, and these are our new events and what's post-construction. So the whole park is available for, for activities and events, including the facilities, the amphitheater, the community clubhouse, uh, the band shell, the arts and crafts building, and the new outdoor stage and the plaza here. Um, so they can be incorporated into one event or they can be broken out into sub-events. Um, or even just one small event, for an example, if you had a poetry reading off of the uh, stage here. And we are having our operational master plan presented to the board of directors this April, uh, April 21st, Wednesday night at 6 p.m. via Zoom. What that is, is that's the operational plan for this area right here. What we plan to do, or hopefully plan to do, after we open up. So what we want to do is have a solid plan that we can look at plan for and engage the community with um, on the future operations of this one wonderful facility. I think I mentioned this is an $18.8 million um, construction project out of that 26.9 million. Next slide, please. So <clears throat> this here is that plaza area that we, I just talked about and it's flexible. It's a very flexible space. We also believe it's very pop up or by the moment. Um, we can hopefully plan this without months of planning. So we're able to put in a small concert up here on the stage on a Thursday night or Friday night or Sunday night or Sunday afternoon, whatever the case may be, and have people just come on over. And they may be coming over from the restaurants and the and the drink establishments and coming over to the park with that food and beverage that they're allowed to bring over and enjoying that, that, that event, that light event that's happening in the park and, and that social atmosphere that surrounds it. Uh, and that's what we really wanna see where we're really the, the front yard, if we will, of the village. 
and you're able to just walk over there and, and become part of the overall village as a whole, not a separate entity, but just an extension of that, your front yard, if you will. And, and this is not just usable by the district. If the deli, for an example, wanted to do um, some type of event out here, we're hoping that we're able to accommodate that type of thing. Uh, we have some restrictions legally and things like that, but we want to be as flexible and as accommodating as we can for this. Not looking at it from a competition point of view, but look at it as us all together and how can we create that atmosphere um, of community and people really desiring to be here in Fair Oaks. Next slide, please. And then our community events, our large community events and our band stage. The band stage, it's just over there to the left of the restrooms. You see the restrooms in the background there. The, the band stage shell is, remains the same. The concerts in the park where we have them, that's gonna be there. We're gonna have that dance pad out there. So we're gonna be able to have those concerts in the park. Hopefully we'll have other types of productions um, like movies. Um, who knows what could be out there? Um, dance, dance programs, uh, things like that, that we could have out there in the outdoor stage. And this historically, and it's not, it may not always be this way, but this would be those free community events because it's really hard to, to charge like you can inside the amphitheater. So this would be those large scale type of community events that people can just come over and enjoy. Um, and those we look forward to doing. The playground's right there for the families and kids. Uh, we want to make this family friendly again, as we talked about earlier. So next slide. And then the inside of the amphitheater, as I mentioned, ticketed events. This one's a little uh, unique here. And I mentioned this last month. This seating here is just over 500 people. That's substantial. That's one of the largest amphitheaters for a community this side, the size that I'm aware of. Um, so it's a big facility and it has lots of room uh, for folks. Now the 500 seating is a little stretch because there's some bad seat, uh, sight lines for it, especially for theatrical productions, not necessarily for music as much, but for theatrical it is. So it's not, even though I say 500, it's probably realistically close to three to 400, but still that's a lot of seating uh, in it. And we're hoping to expand the theatrical productions again, at that board meeting, you're going to hear some of this uh, in April. You'll hear some of the things about that. Um, music in here, concerts as well. So those things that you've probably participated in, again, the theater, the music performances, kid and family friendly events, which we're really looking forward again to doing. Rentals out of here. If a third party wanted to come in and do a production, can we let them? Can Broadway come in here and do a Broadway show? Probably not, but it would be great if stuff like that was able to happen where a traveling show could come in and put on a production. Um, so also uh, weddings. Uh, we've had some requests for weddings prior to us closing down. Um, we hope that that's available next as well. And then uh, we also had some requests for graduations, high school graduations, um, even middle school graduation, preschool graduations for that matter, it wouldn't matter. Um, just things like that where the community can really come in and enjoy and experience this wonderful um, amended facility. Next slide. And then our new facilities, our inside facilities. This is the actual stage of the amphitheater. And right behind the wall, behind the audience there, um, that kind of tiered type of look there, that's the door that opens out to the amphitheater. So in the open air theater productions during, this, during the warmer months, um, this stage is opened out to the amphitheater. In the winter, it's closed and we're able to have an inside stage or a black box stage or black box production thing. We wanna think of it more than just a stage, but just a facility that people can use. It actually will see close to 200 people. So we're looking at this thing as a, as a way to really bring a community center type of approach to the facilities. There's three other rooms attached to behind the back door there um, that go out and that back, those back three rooms are dividable. Um, so you can actually use them as one large one, uh, one medium one and one small one or three small ones. Um, so it has a lot of versatility in there for the public to use uh, throughout the community. And that's what we're hoping. Those flexible spaces will drive rentals, usage, and other things like that. And again, at that April board meeting, we're gonna present some of those concepts and ideas and how many of these types of programs, facilities are 
programs or events that we'll have to do as a park district to break even. We will not make money, but we cannot afford to lose money neither. So we need to provide services and programs that really do reach out to the community, make it affordable, um, yet still not put a tax burden on the citizens um, of Fair Oaks. So it's a challenge. I'm, I hope that we're all up for the challenge. We do need the community support for that kind of challenge. And I look forward to working on it with all of you. Um, to keep up with what's going on with us, um, I love that survey again. We'll look at the uh, top three here. There's Facebook, The Roost, and you don't see the email newsletters, but you do sign up them through them on the website. Um, those are our three big ones. Our website is active. Uh, we change it constantly. Uh, we do keep up with the Measure J projects as well as community events. Uh, our Instagram account and our uh, Twitter account and our YouTube channel. Hopefully the YouTube channel will take off. I saw a zero on there, but uh, the, that video stuff can be a lot of fun specifically for events, uh, construction and things like that that are going on throughout the district. So watch for those things. And as I mentioned, things change. And as things change, we update through the electronic version. It's really hard to get things out in print version to people as because things are so dynamic right now. So watch those things. And that's how we keep everybody informed. And with that, I want to thank you again all for attending. And it looks like Keith's got a survey for us. <clears throat> So Mike, you had, you had previously asked, you'd like a little bit more feedback and which of the uh, Fair Oaks Recs and Parks events have the people who have joined us today attend? And so if everyone could just quickly, you know, vote for as many of these as you attend, that'll give us a little bit of feedback of the most popular events out there. Some pretty clear winners emerging here. I'm going to go out on a limb and get concerts in the park in there as one of the winners. I'm not seeing the results yet. <laughs> All right, a couple more seconds and here we go. So now everyone gets to see ah, it. There we go. <laughs> and yes, concerts in the park is very popular, but Chicken Festival, no surprise, is our winner. Wow, look at that. You know, and that does speak incredibly highly of our community. They just really love to participate in events and especially those large events when we gather as a community and celebrate, you know, the pleasure of having fun. Um, you just even just enjoy music or an event like that. It really is all about having fun. And I do appreciate everybody that has participated, will participate and continues to participate in our activities and events. Thank you. So Rachel, if you're ready, if you would unmute yourself and let me know if you're ready for your slide. I'm ready. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me today. Um, I was so excited to share um, a campaign that we have going on. Um, uh, in February, the Orangeville Fair Oaks Community Foundation approached the Fair Oaks Chamber, as well as the Orangeville Chamber, and um, pitched a campaign. And we went live and it was wonderful. And so I'd like to tell you how that went because I'd like to see it impact um, some restaurants in the village. Um, so the Community Foundation offered uh, to pick three Orangeville restaurants and three Fair Oaks restaurants and pay each of them $1,500 for 100 meals. No kickback was asked for. We didn't ask for them to give the money back in any way. It was just simply a way of ordering 100 meals for restaurants that maybe at that time were not getting a lot of orders. Um, and the way that it impacted the community was that we then gave those 100 dinners um, to people who maybe otherwise couldn't um, go out to eat. And we put it out there like you could pay whatever you can. So if you could pay nothing, that's okay. It was anonymous, nobody knew whether or not you paid or you could pay some or you could pay it forward and buy dinners for other people. Um, and the reason for that was that about 50% um, was collected back and that meant that they could move forward and do another six week campaign. Um, and so the six restaurants that participated last time, you can see them there, the Blarney Stone, Pasta a la Mode, Smoky Oaks Tavern, which was a Fair Oaks restaurant, uh, the Paisley Cafe, and then Dad's Kitchen and El Gallo, which are Fair Oaks restaurants. Um, this next time around, which we're planning on launching the first week of May, we would love to see um, some village restaurants um, 
be the beneficiary of the $1,500, 100 meals. We ask our restaurants to um, make that as profitable for them as possible. Um, you don't have to offer a extravagant meal for the $15. We really want it to be an impactful um, amount of money for the restaurant. And the chamber provides volunteers to come and distribute the dinners for them so that it limits the stress on the kitchen and the staff. And it becomes just a real win-win for the restaurant and the community. Um, and so we kind of did it like a drive-through type of a thing where the volunteers distributed the, the meals and it didn't interrupt the, the kitchen, the inside of the restaurant or the staff. Um, so if you guys know of or work at or own a village restaurant, I'd love to hear um, whether or not they'd be willing to participate in this. A hundred dinners on a Tuesday night is a lot. It's a lot for any restaurant to handle, but we uh, we got through it really efficiently with the restaurants and they were ever so grateful. And so uh, we'd love to be in talks with any restaurant that would like to participate. Thank you, Rachel. You're welcome. And again, I will remind everyone that we do have a chat feature. We'll try and save time at the end for questions. We will follow up with people if we don't get a chance to answer them today. And so please post your questions there and we'll get through this as quickly as we can. Don, if you are uh, able to unmute and join us. Good morning. First of all, William, thank you for inviting the, the Fair Oaks uh, Theater Festival to uh, participate. We have been an active part of the community for over 35 years. And we're excited about the future and, and, and how we need to pivot like I guess every other business or, or operation is doing to figure out how to work in the environment we're doing. And then after we come out of this, those things that we've learned to keep uh, on doing is, is an exciting thing for us. We just had our annual St. Patrick's Day dinner, uh, which we normally celebrated for 37 years at the clubhouse. Uh, this was done virtually. We did a drive-through, uh, we sold over a hundred dinners, and then we did a video presentation uh, on our website with uh, some of the actors and singers of some of the, the, the programs that we've done. So that was our first effort of doing a, uh, uh, a, a streaming um, event. We really was struggled with the COVID, especially with the six foot um, uh, uh, distancing. We didn't want our actors to have to wear masks. So we were in a situation where we had to literally separate everybody for rehearsals and for the video. So as, as the restrictions uh, lighten up, that might be an opportunity to do. We're very excited working with the park district uh, with their portable stage. Uh, that opens up some real uh, exciting opportunities for uh, us to take part in doing plays um, I, I love the idea of children's uh, activities. Uh, uh, we have always done a, a, a children's activity uh, in the month of July at the clubhouse. That kind of uh, program in the afternoon in the park would just be, uh, you know, something would uh, really work to give back to the community. Um, we're going to work with, um, uh, you know, the, the the restrictions of going from uh, a a, a you know, four walled uh, project like the amphitheater or the clubhouse to the open ground. But I think as we approach this, we can we can start working on it. As far as the future planning, it's going to take us between two and three months lead time for us to put a show on. That would be a rehearsing, staging, and then figuring out the number of shows and then having enough time to advertise and promotion. One of the things we found with our uh, St. Patrick's uh, we have actually embedded, invested in outside media. We used our Facebook, we used our website. Uh, we had a 4,000 uh, member um, uh, email blast that we sent emails to, and we also um, ran ads in the local newspapers. So uh, we had never really used um, outside media, but again, we have to, we, we really have to you know, find ways to communicate and bring people on board. As far as uh, the future, uh, the theater is here. We want to be a part of everything that goes on in the village. Uh, as uh, Mike was talking about the Christmas tree lighting, then I can see that uh, our actors and costumes might uh, be, uh, you know, walking through the village as we have a theme. There's that. There's all sorts of partnerships. We're excited about getting out of the theater into the community. 
So this really gives us an opportunity. And every time we interface with someone who's never been to the theater, it gives us an opportunity to bring more people into the theater. So we, we're looking at, at this year uh, as a learning curve uh, to be active. It's important for us and for our members to, you know, to, to not just to fold up our tents and go away. And I think the uh, mic is opening some opportunities for us and we're very, very excited about that. Nan, can I ask, uh, can I uh, hand this ball over to you and, and have you give your update? Actually, <clears throat> we're going to uh, give Pete a chance to uh, jump in here and share a, a quick update on what he's doing with uh, FOCAP, another organization that many of you are familiar with. Hi folks, uh, Keith, thanks for inviting me uh, to participate this morning. Um, FOCAP, for those of you who don't know, is something that we started uh, about six years ago uh, in the community because um, um, there are a lot of local organizations, great organizations, some are relatively new, some have been around a long time, and uh, for many, many years they've been all going off on their own, trying to uh, build some awareness, uh, do some events and projects and things like that, and I I thought it would be uh, beneficial for everyone if we could um, kind of get together uh, once a month uh, to learn about what each organization is doing in hopes that we could uh, help them support the event, uh, maybe even volunteer some people to help put on the event. And so we have many different uh, local organizations in town that uh, get together, uh, they send one representative per group. Uh, I don't want three or four or five from the Rotary Club, for instance. And um, we talk about what's going on. We give updates. Uh, and then uh, we have the uh, uh, county supervisor's offices participates with us, the library, uh, the Women's Thursday Club, the Chamber, the Park District, the Cemetery District, the Water District, all the different groups in town. And uh, in fact, I love the theater festival to be part of this because I've invited uh, them for many years and it's great to see you here, Don. So maybe we can connect afterwards. But- um, I'd love to do that, Pete. FOCAP is um, the Fair Oaks Community Action Partnerships. I know there's a lot of faux groups in town. Joe Maloney has the FOOF, which is the Fair Oaks Old Farts, but they're not as well known as many of the other ones. But um, we have been uh, in the past getting together at a different facility from one of the groups uh, who participates in our meetings, but since COVID, uh, all of our meetings are on Zoom. They're the last Wednesday of each month at four o'clock. Um, if your group is not involved, now this is not for businesses. My intention is not to have businesses involved. It's strictly local organizations. So um, if you're interested and you haven't been like the Racket Club, the Fair Oaks Racket Club is another one that I'd love to get involved. But we have many uh, people that get together and learn about what's um, uh, what's happening with their group. So anyway, that's what FOCAP is. If you have any other questions, uh, Pete at PeteSchroeder.com is my email. It's I'm easy to get a hold of, and I'd be happy to talk with you. <clears throat> Thank you, Pete. Um, Nan, if you're uh, if you're with us, if you could unmute and share with us your update. Thanks so much, Keith. Um, thank you, everyone. I am uh, the secretary of FOVEC on the board of directors and have been for, I don't know, five years or so. <clears throat> and what I wanted to do today is kind of um, update you on the events and what FOVEC's doing and other organizations as far as events go in the village and also what the local businesses in the village are doing. Um, <clears throat> we have lots of great organizations and you know, for the next year and a half or so, our events in the village are gonna look very different, just as they, but we're doing what we can. Phobic's primary objective is always about the village, making it a better place and, and supporting people and businesses that are there and making it more to come to. 
we do all that we can to do that. So we have several events scheduled for 2021 or in the works for scheduling. The first coming up um, will actually be our spring social. The Village uh, Benefit Barbecue is first listed there, but our spring social would be the first event. And that's gonna happen Saturday, April 17th at the Brahma Bar and Grill. It will be COVID compliant. It'll be outside on their patio. From 12 to three or one to four, we haven't quite pinned down the time yet, but you can come get to know um, the members of FOVEC, um, socialize with your friends, and also get to know the businesses in the area. So that's the first thing coming up. And we like to do that on a quarterly level, just to help you guys kind of get to know who we are and what we're doing in the village. The other um, next event is the Village Benefit Barbecue. This will be our third Village Benefit Barbecue. We should have had it last year, but then COVID hit and of course, we all scrambled at that time, but it's a super fun event. It's outdoors also. It's actually held on California Avenue at Mike Ajo's house. He's got a great outdoor area. We have um, our local barbecue pro grill up or barbecue up the meats. And we have several different varieties. I think the last time we had pork, brisket and chicken. And then we have all the company sides that go with it. This event is limited to 150 people. Um, the cost is $40 each. And in the next week or two, you should be seeing a, an invitation and it posted on our Facebook page. So you'll wanna get your tickets early. We also have live music there. And then we have cocktails and soft drinks as well and a dessert and a raffle. And it's just really a really fun time, a community event. And it's definitely a fun thing and the place where you'll wanna to be to connect with your uh, Fair Oaks Village who's who, that's for sure. Another new event that we have coming up this April, and we're looking to do this perhaps on a monthly basis, is the Fair Oaks Village Vintage Car Show. That's going to be Sunday, April 25th, and that will be uh, from 12 to 3. It's put on between Fovic and Vintage Cruisers. They currently do one monthly at the Orangevale Dairy Queen. But it'll be all vintage cars. It'll just be a small grouping. And the whole idea is just to get people to come in on a Sunday where usually there's not much going on in the village and take a look at these really cool cars and maybe check out a restaurant or a shop or two. And hopefully as we go along and this grows, more businesses will be open on Sundays because Sundays seem like a great day to have activities in the village. And it'd be great if more businesses were open. Um, we also will have a summer social check, just stay in tune and you'll learn more about that. Um, a couple of years ago, we did the Oktoberfest and that was also super fun. That was at the Brew Pub. We're looking to do that at the Brew Pub and here and the, the more details will be coming. And then social, which will be at another local restaurant. And it'll be the same kind of thing, get together, um, get to know your FOVIC members and other community members and just come out and be with one another in this amazing community that we have. So that's what FOVIC has coming up for this year. Um, the next thing I wanted to let you know about, next slide, please, Keith. Actually, Nan, maybe we can do just a really quick poll because part of the reason for doing these events is to get feedback. We think they're good ideas, but I'd be, be wonderful if all of you could just take a minute and give us your thoughts on how you feel about a, uh, a monthly car show on Sundays in the village. And Nan, I'd also just give you a quick heads up. We're running a little bit late, so we want to make sure we leave time for Q&A at the end of this. I can talk fast. I know you can. <laughs> As you know. <laughs> all right. Thank you all Sometimes for participating here. I'll give you a quick chance to see what we got. And it looks like looks like the majority of you support it. And obviously we'd be interested in hearing from those of you who, who are concerned what your concerns are because we're trying to, to do events that make sense for the village. So the next thing I wanted to update you on is the Historical Society. They will be doing their um, opening 
grand opening, but soft opening. They haven't opened for a year, just like a lot of places. Um, that will be Saturday, April 3rd, the Saturday before Easter, this coming Saturday. A couple things that will be um, new in the Historical Society is they're going to have a full display of things going on with the park. So all the stuff that Mike talked about earlier and the plans for the reno, all that stuff will be in there. And they will have their volunteers in there to answer questions. Um, I believe there will be volunteers from the park district or those are probably paid employees, but also volunteers from the historical society to answer any questions. Another great thing to do are the walking tours of Fair Oaks. I don't know how many of you are aware of those, but they're really, really fun and very informational about the history of our really cool community. They do have a brochure in the Historical Society building that you can take, and that features this, a small uh, walking tour. But on your smartphone, if you go to their web website, which is fairoakshistory.org, there is a, a link to the walking tour and that can come up on your smartphone and that actually has several different uh, tours. And the great thing about that is as you're walking along, it will tell you um, information about certain buildings and what used to be there, like old hotels and things like that. And that's really, really a fun way to do it. So it's really fun to bring your family the day before Easter, do a little walking tour and get to know the history of our amazing community. The next thing um, is the chamber. So the chamber board right now is focusing on what to do with the events because normally they are involved in quite a few events and put on events in the village. And of course that hasn't happened for the last year and is gonna be very different with the park renovation going on as well. So currently as um, Mike talked about in his presentation, the chamber is partnering with the, the park district to put on the events that are gonna ha be happening mostly at Fair Oaks Park. Um, for the foreseeable future. So as far as the Fiesta, there that is not happening this year. Same with Taste of Fair Oaks, although um, Northridge where Country Club, where it's normally held, is, is starting to open up and has had a couple events. There may be more information on that and it might occur in a in somewhat altered form. So just stay tuned with the chamber to find out more about that. Uh, concerts, as you know, those will be at Fair Oaks Park this summer. The mayor campaign that is going to be similar to last year in that it will be primarily virtual, but as more restaurants and venues open up, there may be an opportunity for some of the candidates to hold some actual in person events. So again, stay tuned for that. And then, as Mike mentioned, Christmas in the village is kind of up in the air as to what to do about that without being part. It's kind of difficult to do it in the village. So who knows what that maybe we'll move to Fair Oaks Park, but we don't know. Again, stay tuned to find out more um, about what's going on with that. And then finally, I wanted to talk with you about what's going on in the village. So um, as you may is now fully open with inside and outside dining, which is fabulous. You know, I don't know how these restaurants have have dealt with uh, with it all because the, the rules have changed as Mike has shared too, you know, open, not open, and it's been very difficult. So we're really, really happy that they're able to be open for inside and outside dining. Rama Bar and Grill is also open fully right now, and um, they've been closed for quite some time as well. I spoke to the owner of the coffee house in Delhi, and they still do not have a time or date when they will be open. They're exploring all their options and they wanna make sure they have the, the right staff and that everything's ready to go and they won't have to shut down again, but that's at least a couple of weeks away. I have some great news about Stockman though. They officially opened yesterday, woohoo! So we can all go to our local longtime watering hole that's been around forever and ever. and. Uh, they do have to limit the capacity. They are serving some sort of food. So if your lunch is a cup of noodles, that's the place to go. But you can go into the Stockman now. And they were closed for 378 days, in case anyone is counting. Um, I was going to, oh, go ahead. Sorry, <clears throat> let me um, go ahead and finish. Okay, I was just going to give you a little update about the parking project. I know we're really running late, but as I mentioned, Fovec's primary concern is to really enhance the village, and we've worked on providing parking that's been um, a priority of ours since our inception in 2008. We've done a lot to, to move that 
project forward and continue to do on it. The whole streetscape project did gain us some parking spaces and beautified the street and also made it easier for handicapped people to travel the whole distance of the village without rocks and uneven pavement and all that stuff. Um, and we did get some striping done to, to create more parking at that time as well. Currently, we have applied for a grant, a TOT grant. We will have um, notification of that, I believe, in March on whether or not we will have gotten money to help with parking from um, the county. And then future endeavors are in our vision, which you can find on our website. And um, they include um, one-way streets maybe to allow more parking, the, the California Avenue Park Avenue kind of loop around Plaza Park was one idea. Um, also the AT&T building that's over there on Sunrise, they have a huge parking lot with over a hundred spaces that is virtually unused right now. So that did use that on a, on a um, kind of test basis for the last chicken festival. Um, and of other options that we're exploring. So phobic is really primarily, I mean, we are completely focused on the village and how to make things better. And if you wanna get involved or help with any of these projects, we'd love to have you. So just um, connect with us on Facebook or our website or email or whatever. And that's what I've got. Thank you so much, Nan. And to Nan's last comment, um, Fair Oaks really thrives based on our, the participation of all of our residents. And I know that as volunteers, sometimes it feels a little bit overwhelming and sometimes people just need help in figuring out how to get involved. And so if you would take just a moment and share, assuming that you, you are, are a volunteer or interested in volunteering, kind of where you are on the spectrum. Because if, if we've got people out there who are looking to do more, then we've got to get smarter about how to engage you. We've got about 50% of the vote in. I'll give you just a couple more seconds to, to cast your ballot if you're interested. All right, thank you very much. And interestingly, it says that quite a large percentage of you actually have a little bit more capacity. And so we as volunteer groups have not done a very good job of engaging you. And that's really what I wanna talk about next. So let me just pull that down. And then hopefully, um, I want to talk to you for a moment about our, um, our revised website. Many of you probably are aware that we've had a, uh, a FOVAC website for quite some time. And the real goal of the website is to provide a resource to the community to know what's going on and to provide feedback. And based on some of your feedback, um, we've learned that we haven't always provided you the best tools to engage, to figure out where we need help. Uh, to understand what's going on. So we're going to launch a new website tomorrow. Um, it will use the same address as before, so you'll still be able to search for FOVAC and get to it, but it will have some new capabilities. And, and specifically, um, it's going to have this thing we call a forum. And the forum is very much like Facebook. Um, hopefully, we're going to get a, a view of this here in a moment, see if it are you all seeing the forum now? Anyone who can comment? And the short answer is it's, it's interactive. It's an opportunity for you to uh, not only view what we're posting, but for you to provide comments, to ask questions. Our goal is to try and make this a resource for the community that if you're interested in helping, that you can, you can express that interest. If you're curious about what's happening with Stockman's, you can ask and get it answered in near real time. And that it's organized in a way that makes sense. And uh, obviously, if, if you need help with that, that you will, uh, you will ask us and we'll, we'll try and correct the, uh, the presentation. Um, I'm not gonna go through the whole website because you're gonna be able to explore that later. 
Um, just to let you know that if you do have questions as you continue to use it, at least for the time being, I'm acting as the webmaster in those volunteer activities for any of you who have interest in learning about websites or helping. Um, obviously, always looking for volunteers to support that and help make it more valuable and user friendly. The other thing I would I would point out for those of you who don't know is we actually post at least two stories a month on the individuals and the businesses and the organizations in the community. And it's a great way to get to know these restaurants and these owners and the volunteers in more depth. And so there's a stories post that I would encourage each of you to explore to learn a little bit more about the village that we all live in. And with that, what I'd like to do is see if we can't, for whatever reason, I'm not being able to present that. So I'll do it the old fashioned way. Is get to questions and answers. So at this point, you should all be able to uh, unmute and ask your questions directly. But before we, we get to that, there are some questions that came in via the chat line. And Mike, hopefully you're still with us and can unmute. Uh, one of the questions, the first question that came in, not surprisingly, is for all of these wonderful events that we're talking about, where are they going to park? Yeah, and that's a great question. And it's always going to be a question. Um, we don't have a large parking facility and FOVEC is working on that. I'm actually on the parking committee for FOVEC, but um, we will add 20 additional spots than what we currently have with the construction that we're doing. That's not a lot, but it is something. Um, and we'll be doing that. As we talked about, we're looking at alternative sources like the AT&T lot um, as a possibility for parking. That's still up in the air. That's not our parking lot. Um, so we don't know if that's going to happen. But most importantly, what we know and understand is that there's a sweet spot for event size. We're not going to put on a bunch of events that bring in 10,000 people. We're going to be looking at those events that bring in up to two to 300 people, which is about 100 and some odd cars in bringing into the village. Um, and those cars may be coming in anyway, and some of those folks will walk and some of those folks will do other things. So that's what we're looking at is finding that sweet spot and then really targeting our events and our activities around that sweet spot. We'll still do the large ones like Chicken Festival um, and those things, but uh, we're not going to oversaturate the village with those large scale events. Thank you, Mike. I think the next question yeah, is- Keith, I also wanted to add that we, we really want to encourage folks to get in the habit of uh, carpooling uh, as they come to the village or using uh, car services such as Uber and Lyft and there, therefore we don't need as many parking uh, spaces that way. Thank you, William. <clears throat> the, uh, the next question is regarding the band show and is the question is, will there be plenty of lawn space for those who usually attend concerts in the park? Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good that's a good question. The band shell itself is in the what's called the village park section of the park right now. All of this is going to be village park, but that grass area is going to stay the same size. It's actually we're going to add some um, some wall seating on the back side of it, closer to uh, I believe it's uh, Tomasco Street, right back there on that far side. Um, <clears throat> and so we're going to kind of tear that up a little bit, so it's going to be some more seating. It's a little far away from the stage, but it's kind of a neat area. But the actual grass area itself. It, that that space is going to remain the same so you will not lose any seating for the band shell use okay those are all the questions that i see from the chat does anyone want to ask unmute themselves and ask a question of our of our panel today going going all right then for those of you who were uh patient and survived all this time. I'd like to uh, recognize uh, EJ little, EJ's Little People for uh, donating a $50 gift certificate for those of you who have uh, survived this long. If this technology works, you should all now be seeing one of these little spin wheels. I can never tell whether it's really working. I'm reminded that I need to shuffle the names in order to make sure it's a fair spin, and let's see who's going to be our winner today. Jennifer, Jennifer, are you still on our call today? 
Jennifer, Jennifer. All right, so it sounds like we've lost Jennifer. We will reach out to her and let her know that she has won. And with that, we're gonna try and wrap this up on time. I thank you all for your participation and I hope you will join us uh, about this time next month. Look on our website or your emails for upcoming announcements. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone.